is Tom Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm here with my friend Tyler, just by the message of freedom here at BCU. Right. So that's hidden lines behind government. That this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think is uh, with government, like everybody wants to, you know, wants to get hurt, nobody wants to get hurt, but as a whole, people can't control themselves. Like, because, like if you see a movie in black, yeah. the, the record at the beginning says, uh, people are smart, or no, a person is smart, but people are stupid. <laughs> well, what does that tell you about the, the people who wrote the scripts to begin with? Right? That they have a, the people, because people, people behind that movie, there's the script writers. Yeah. Right? So the script writers, they're project, projecting their own point of view of the world, that they can't trust other people. Maybe they grew up with destruction. People, people that hurt them, and so they have this warped view of humanity that any one of us could be a secret text to Morgan, right? And that's what they're projecting into that movie. But I mean, you have friendships because they're voluntary, because they don't hurt you, right? So you, you've already met a group of people here, right, on a voluntary consensus, and you guys talk it out, maybe get anger, raise your voice, but not into that altercation, right? See, we've met people that are nice, good. Um, you haven't met two well, kinds of people sure in Men in Black that you just projects, right? Yeah. Um, but for the most part, most of us <laughs> don't use violence. So again, like, and actually the first two questions, so you don't use violence. So I'm pretty sure your friends could answer the same way as you, right? Yes, probably. Yeah, so I mean, for the most part, we are good. For the most part, we can, we can talk about this stuff. Um, so I, I, I think we're very much capable of being responsible for our own actions. Uh, but, but, but we can still have rules. Maybe that's the area that government is of a concern where people feel like they do need. We can still have rules. But government has to monopolize the rules. They have a monopoly on law, taxation, security, judges, currency, uh, first class mail. And that's what, that's the problem. They have a monopoly on the service. Services I want, but I don't have the freedom to cancel unsubscribe as you would any other service like Netflix, right? You don't have the freedom to unsubscribe. You don't have the freedom to even compete against those monopolized services to say, I can do it better than you. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumers. <laughs> right? And that's really it. And you realize if you actually use your voice to talk about the values of one another, you realize we never needed a government. We don't even need a small government. Right? We could provide those same services in a free market. Because right? now you don't have to have one person that provides it, that they can't go bankrupt. <laughs> you're forced to pay for like social security. Right? You never agreed to that, but you're forced to pay for it. You'll never have it when it's time for you to retire. Yeah. You're going to go, right? Like 20 years old. Right. Probably <laughs> I don't even want to think about that at this point there. Right? Yeah. And that's what I mean, and that's what ends up happening. It becomes so, so sustainable. And anytime you have a monopoly, cost continues to rise, and quality continues to depreciate. But it always starts off small. Yeah. Even in a libertarian government. It starts off small, but every small government continues to grow. Right. And I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to reboot the matrix. I want to end it, right? Yeah. Uh, and then in a libertarian point of view, the free market pretty much provides a lot of great stuff. Yeah. We, that also can include security and law and rule and all that stuff, right? Yeah. At least you can have our user rating system. At least then you can, like, Netflix try to raise their prices. Yeah. At least you can say, you know what? Cancel, unsubscribe, I'm going to who? Yeah. Right? At least the power is back in your hands. Yeah. You have no power when it comes to government, here, right? Yeah. And that's really it. That's pretty much what I'm here to talk about. All right. Yeah. I got I got pamphlets here, right? So the, uh, yeah, a lot sure. of the uh, philosophers, yeah. I guess, people consider themselves libertarian anarchists. Um, that uh, everything privatize everything. You don't need a government monopoly on buying this with these monopolies. Like here in the tax from Virginia, they even have a monopoly on alcohol, right? Yeah. ABC monopoly on the wholesale distribution, retail sale. That's why it's not convenient for you to buy your favorite brand of like honey whiskey at a uh, Kroger or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I should be able to buy that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's not a it's not a it's a victimless crime anyways. Yeah. Right? It's just, it's just the ethanol. Most part. Yeah. yeah. So that's really good, man. Yeah. Alright, cool. That's what you're saying. All right. Yeah? Alright man, my name is Cal. Alright. Take good care. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> How you been? Doing pretty well. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I'm actually a free market anarchist myself, but I wanted to hear some of your points on it. Okay, okay. And just sort of play devil's advocate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, me. I'll just, I'll just, I guess, argue as if I were my dad. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how would you... Um, keep something from becoming a monopoly, keep um, a free market system from becoming a monopoly, monopoly in any respect without right. a government regulation. 
Uh, okay, well, so there's like two problems there that government can regulate, right? Okay. Uh, so you look like a lot of businesses, like in Chicago, who have a lot of their food carts, and but they don't have the licenses. A lot of them are not permitted. So, but they try to keep it extra clean in the event they do, they are caught. But you look at the businesses that are licensed, even have the permits. A lot of negative stuff still happens regardless, mm -hmm. right? So, license, so regulation, license, a permit doesn't say whether you're a good worker or not. Whether you have the skills to match, or you're competent, it's just a piece of paper anyone can apply. Yeah. Right. And be people well, because they're licensed, they have the allurement that they, they're a good business to begin with. Um, so you're talking about like how to, how to prevent monopoly. So of course you don't give uh, anyone that kind of political power in the first place, right? You don't uh, advocate or legitimize uh, the government and political, I guess, politics to begin with. Can right? I get one of your flyers? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, so I guess we could we could push this off like when we finally end the state and there's no government. How do you prevent monopolies from arising? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. So now you no longer have um, one monopoly uh, that's like a monopoly in first class now, right? Like USPS, six billion dollars yeah. in debt. Uh, USPS, FedEx, uh, DHL will now probably branch out to create the infrastructure to deliver cheaper mail, right? Now anyone can compete because no, there's no longer lobbying power. There's no one to lobby anymore. There's no one. Uh, there's no monopoly in laws that create exemptions for the bigger businesses. Right. That that makes out. Make sure that the smaller business you try to compete can't. Right. So then anyone can compete. I'd but it's going to be a lot harder for any of these smaller businesses to compete with these larger established businesses yeah, yeah, yeah. that already have infrastructure, already have yeah. a much sure. larger yeah. clientele. Um, but this happens all the time now, uh, like with new style of clothing, right? Kickstarter campaigns, right? Something that's small that starts and turning into something big, right? I mean, you have you had your MySpace and Facebook that these two college guys just trying something out. Like, you know, they didn't have the infrastructure like MySpace. But now when you have a free market, when you don't have a monopoly on law, anyone can, do so. anyone can say, I could do it better than, than that person. Right, and there's nothing to stop you. How, okay. Right. So let's say we privatize um, the courts. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you're for that. Yeah. So privatization of the courts. What happens when you have different court systems arising? Yeah. Competing. How do you decide which court you go to? Because some are going to be biased towards one person's yeah, yeah, yeah. standpoint. Some are going to be biased towards someone absolutely, else. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you dispute that if there's no centralized? This is how we do things. Right. Right. Well, all right. Um, well, you, you, can, you can find uh, some examples of this that already kind of exists here, right? You have Geico doesn't go to war with Allstate, right? With like if the person that they contract, their vehicle hits that vehicle, right? They, they don't want to have this kind of violent dispute. They don't want to have, well, I don't recognize you as a business, right? Because our customers are going to be interacting with each other a lot and we want to mitigate the kind of risk of violence that they might interact with or they might be involved with. So let's find a, a rule that we can both agree to that's amicable. We can agree to a different court system that we can both agree that might be fair and impartial, right? So if our uh, dispute are not resolved, then let's take it to a third party that we both agree will be more fair and partial. DRO. Yeah. So, um, hey, I'm going to go catch yeah, the yeah, cinema yeah, yeah, club. Yeah, Hit me up. All, all right. right, all right. Um, so, but the thing about the court system in itself, the customer though, is the one who's choosing that, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can look at the, now that you don't have one monopoly on justice, you have thousands. So you can say, look, we have 10 years of experience, Look at our rating system, good, good comments, never never, uh, never had a bad experience with a customer. Someone can say, well, we have 15, and we'll give you like 50% off. But right? if you have two customers, it, there's obviously two people in a dispute. Yeah. One wants to go to one because they know that they're going sure, to favor yeah. them. One wants to go to the other because they know that they're going sure, to favor sure. them. But what do you but, do? But you're looking for the most objective and fair court, right? You wouldn't want to be uh, involved. Uh, or, so that's what they, these two businesses would do. Again, Geico has agreements with Allstate. Uh -huh. uh, even though, of course, they will favor one another, like you get into a car accident, you know, all states not going to they're just go look at the evidence and as objectively as they can. The businesses that fails to do that, that they can't do it objectively, would be the ones to lose out. Because someone could say, or someone who maybe had a bad experience with them could say, you know what, I'm going to form a better form of justice, right? That's really fair and impartial, that's really equal. Uh, and that could be the third party arbitrator that people go to. But what about on a much smaller scale? Obviously, all state and Geico have reputations to keep up, but on a much smaller scale, say, um, I break into someone's house. Yeah. I break into someone's house and I take something. Yeah. They want to try and prove it. They want to try and persecute me yeah. in a court of law. Yeah. I want to go to this court yeah. that's going to most likely let me off with a really lenient sentence. He wants to go to another court that's going to have a much harsher sentence, have me in jail for 10 right, years. Right, right, right. All right, all right, so it, 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 it wouldn't really be a court, at that, for, so to speak. It'll be mostly like uh, 
there will be a lot of dispute resolution organizations. So it'd be pretty much an organization that provides you security. You have a contract in there in that, and that contract you can sign that says like, in the event that I assault someone, my premiums will go up because they're taking a risk by you being their customer that in the event that you assault someone, they're gonna have to pay them out, right? Tell you kind of have this already like car insurance, right? Yeah. In case I hit your car, you know, my premiums might go up, my insurance will pay them out. So that helps mitigate, I guess, uh, altercations or assault or theft to begin with because uh, your premiums might go up if you get caught. Right? you don't have that insurance though? Uh, then you know you still have philanthropists like uh, Carnegie Hall who donated like thousands of public libraries even to the public. So, you know what you can't cover? You're good. But you still have a lot of also businesses that cater to smaller plants, uh -huh. right? You still have phones like pay for as you go. So you have different weird kind of businesses that cater to whatever affordable income. But when half your income is re returned back to you, right? When when uh, half of the uh, what they call taxes is given back to you, you have a lot more you can play with, right? You have a lot more you can afford. Um, you know we'd, we'd be like. All the regulations, restrictions on voluntary interactions in the past 60 years is why we're 75% poor, right? Again, licenses and permits discriminate against even the educated poor from competing, right? To cut hair in, in like what state of Washington costs like $500 hair, right? So, uh, you know, and so that's so you find, but we'd we, uh, be a lot more wealthier without the uh, monopoly on currency too, right? Losing 97% of its value, right? You free up this currency. I don't think we experienced a lot of these problems. I mean, you look back in 1960, you know, the poor poverty rates were declining before government got involved with the world war programs. Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty. Um, so I wouldn't even think of it to be so much a problem of affordability, and because. A lot of this stuff again already exists. So instead of one monopoly on land, right? Uh, you have thousands of communities. You have uh, you, like uh, you have your community that's 420 friendly. One next door that's not. They agree to the rules, like your apartment complex. They you agree to the rules, so you won't have a dog but a cat, right? Here's the consequences you get caught. So you have thousands of those communities catering to your lifestyle and preference, mm -hmm. right? But see, this wasn't really as much about affordability, but as much as um, how do you? After, if there's a dispute, like, yeah. I'll be, um, All right, so the altercation of this people? The altercation, okay. uh, back to the altercation. Davis Freeman has a really good response to that, okay. in that, uh, say that uh, you have your own insurance, mm -hmm. and I have my own insurance, and I, I'm making a claim that you stole my television, because mm -hmm. I installed a security camera in my house to yeah. my premiums, they caught you, have the evidence for this. Okay. Um, so, but of course, I go knocking on your door, hey, listen, uh, you have my TV, uh, will you give me back my TV? The other person says, you know, knowingly that he has it, he lies, he says, no, I don't. Uh, what are you going to do about it? I say, well, I'm going to go contact my insurance then. And then your, your person will say, well, I'll contact mine then, right? Uh, and then, of course, so there's two routes where it could go. Actually, maybe three. Uh, the first route could be, well, I contact my insurance. They send in uh, three people, really big guys, knocking on your door. Hey, listen, uh, we have 24 hours to, we have evidence, we have video footage. Of you oh. have your face, then you saw the TV. It's, it's here, we have the information. Uh, we have several options we can provide you. One, you can return the TV now um, and pay a fee for us having to come out here. Uh, two, we can make this information public. You live in a community, everyone would like to know who the secret thief is in their neighborhood. So, so also, this is a great determinant towards initiation of violence. Uh, or uh, three, uh, you don't have to do anything all, at all, but uh, we're going to escalate it and contact your insurance company, which I think they'll like to know, because they're not going to be objective if, if, that we have the evidence that you sold the TV. Great, this is information I'd like to share with all the competing businesses and your customer base to say, hey, look, you know, they, they don't even, um, even though they'll protect you, but they also protect thieves. Is that what you want in your community? Uh, but even you can escalate it to the next level, where uh, I guess in the appeal to fantasy, the event that they don't want to provide that service and protection of, um, well, say that they do, they, they'll say, well, forget that. I don't care about the video camera. This is my my uh, my client and whatnot. My, my customer is still going to protect them, right? Um, all right, great. But they'll find that violence is a very costly way of doing business, right? It's not like uh, Department of Defense where they can have as much money to drone bomb children. That stuff costs like millions of dollars. You're going to go bankrupt. You keep, you know, using all your capital to kind of invest in stuff instead of trying to prevent violence, right? Um, divorce is very costly because you have to also pay insurance for if that person gets hurt or, you know, life insurance if gets killed. The same thing with the other business, right? They both are working on a budget. Mm -hmm. Anytime again, their customer client can unsubscribe <laughs> like Netflix and they can go bankrupt, right? They're not the only ones there too. There's thousands of other ones trying to go for your business, right? Trying to say they're the most objective. So for the most part, it will just deter to option C that hey, uh, we don't want this. We don't want. Um, uh, escalate it any further. Violence is a very costly way to do business. Uh, let's set up a rule that says in the event that uh, one of your person steals from our client's customer's house, uh, if you have good objective evidence, we'll hear it out, we'll raise this premise, and we'll pay off the cost of that TV, plus your, for you having to come out here. And we'll deal with our customers ourselves. Because uh, they consented to the particular rules for the contract to begin with, right? If I was caught stealing, my premiums will go up, and maybe uh, I didn't have to pay restitution to the person I stole from.
right? If you want to have your uh, ethics, you know, credit rating standing yeah. in place, right? Because if you're not, if they, if the person, even so, you can, you can go even further. But what if the customer says, "Well, fuck you, I'm not going to do anything." All right, you don't have to. I'm going to let everyone know that you don't uphold your contracts. I'm going to let everyone know that you're not a person of your word. That's great. Good luck out there in the real world. Or no one's going to allow you into their diners, uh, to their restaurants, hotels, um, invite you to their homes. You're not a trustworthy person. How couldn't that be abused though? The, uh, uh, that power yeah. to tell Ostracize. everyone. Yeah. 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 The, okay. What well, the? Because that person who's being, who everyone's being told this is a terrible person. Yeah. He can't necessarily defend himself in that well, I mean, if he doesn't have any money to hire someone to tell everyone that he's not. Well, of course he had money because he, uh, he was affording this uh, this service to begin with, right? Uh, so he, he has some kind of income. He's already hiring that. All the companies doing, hey, we just released the evidence, the news media outlets of you stealing that TV. How, but couldn't that be used to manipulate the impoverished if a corporation like this was well, the per- secretly corrupt? Obviously, the person doesn't respect property rights. He doesn't care about it. You know, he, I mean, he can't, he can't justify himself not to be aggressed. If it's okay for him to aggress against others, right? So he, he no longer has any rights. He kind of abolished it the moment he violated another person's right. If he, can, if he makes restitution and makes a man and says, I don't want, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this, then yeah, that's different. But now he's being standoffish. Now he's trying to be like... Um, a very, not not stubborn, but like he's lying, bold face lying. Look, we have the video. All we're doing is sending out to everyone. Everyone makes their own judgment. Like when you go on eBay, like your friends are not telling, don't do business with that person. You just look at the comments that are rated there, and you yourself choose. Well, it's too much of a risk. I don't want to do business, right? So like the whole community doesn't do it itself. It grants the information to you to decide that on your own, whether you want to risk being involved with someone that's a known thief. Yeah. Right. It naturally does that for itself. Okay. Yeah. What would happen if, say, all these um, corporations, like the corporation that owns, say, the railroad, and the corporations that in the different banks, and some of them decided to merge, yeah. start merging because obviously something can happen to the railroad, and it's nice to have a backup in, yeah. the, say, the banks. And then they continue to merge. They continue to merge. Then what you have is just another government regulating absolutely everything yet again. Well, Apple, Apple can never throw you into a cage if you stop going through their coffee shops. Well, Walmart they can, can if they own the prisons. Uh, well, the, 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 the thing is, it's not, there's not going to be prison system, as you know. There's been no prison industrial complex funded by taxation. A lot of these problems are going to be restitution directly to who I offended. There'd be no third parties involved. There's no third person being forced to pay for a prison that he has nothing to do with, right? And that's pretty much how, how it runs today. Like, I don't have nothing. I don't want to throw people into cages for victimless crimes. I don't want to be a participant of that. But so they force you to pay for it through taxes. Yeah. So there's no taxes. You can't force it. It's all voluntary. The first company that tried to do it, even like if Apple continue to make awesome great products and they're like super mega huge, right? At one point, Microsoft with this looks like this, but because anyone can compete along the way, so I might create an even better product. A lot of the lifespans of natural businesses usually last 30 years or so. But even then, you have this scenario, they still can't force you at gunpoint to do it. They can't, they didn't, Walmart can't even do it. Their, their only way to do it is like if you go to food court, there's competing, um, a little food, food stands there. And the most aggressive way they can go is like, hey, try free samples. Right? Try for example. That's really it. That's the most aggressive. That, that's not bad. Unless they own like pol- the police and security forces. If there becomes, um, I think I'm just trying to say that it grows into like large monopolies that like have hold over like certain geographic what, areas. A- areas right. of business and areas of infrastructure, right. which right. then right. merge. So, so, so they found a lot of great way to provide the services uh, that, yeah. uh, uh, that are voluntary, of course. People yeah. pay for these subscriptions. Okay. In, uh, but then if then these no things merge, like the security, there's, there's always options. Like the private security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forces like the the one that is larger than all the others right. merges with the I don't know infrastructure the trains that is that sure, sure. company that's larger than all the others like a company that buys up everything yeah and okay. then w- one company that merges all them together yeah. that then becomes sort of a government because they then own the security they well, own our, the infrastructure no, no. they own the means the of business don't necessarily our, have other actually, our, let's differentiate between the two uh, corporations cease to exist without a government all a corporation is, is a piece of paper backed and forced by the government that allows them to escape personal liability for their actions. So in a free market, a CEO does something wrong, you can sue them directly. They'll be held personally responsible. Uh, they may have some insurances to pre- prevent that, but not in the same way that government is also inescapable of their own actions. They have a lot of immunity for the actions that they do, right? So that's no longer a race. What government is definitionally, it's just a group of individual people that uh, claim the authority to initiate force, mm-hmm. right? In a free market, that's the antithesis to that, right? And it's voluntary. 
uh, Netflix, none of the, no, there's no guns trying to force you to buy their product or service. But that's how government operates. Government has monopolized the services I want, right? They monopolize law, of course, all this stuff is enforced by violence. So even if you have a big conglomerate here, maybe in North America, it's still founded on volunteers. They're no one's forcing. Maybe they still provide like the cheapest, best products anyway. That's the only way they could keep going that big. Um, and even then, anyone can still compete. They can't stop that. There's no government to, to stop them. Uh, and let's see, what else? I, 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 even, even, all right, so, all right, so you can take a trace back. Let's step back for a second. Uh, you have this big, big security business. That's, there's like maybe four other security businesses around this region. They buy out this one for like $200,000, right? The next, uh, the next three, they're going to raise their prices, right? Because now there, there's scarcity involved. So the next one's going to say, well, we're all selling for $500,000, $500 million. It's like, all right, well, we'll borrow some more money and credit, and we're going to buy this one out, right? Now there's two left. What are they gonna do? This one's gonna increase his price to $100 million, right? And now this guy's like already carrying a lot of debt from buying the first two, so okay, so well, let's borrow more credit again. Uh, we could definitely get the last two. So they buy this one up for $100 million. So this one says, well, I'd rather raise my price maybe $700 million. Uh, and there's like, they've already carrying so much debt trying to buy all the competitors. All this one really has to do is just wait it out for this one to collapse in debt. Right, why would I sell? I'm gonna be the one who's in being control of the market. I have no reason to sell, right? You carry on so much debt that you yourself are gonna start collapsing. Um, so that naturally, that's how it naturally prevents monopolies of that kind of, from occurring. Because then any one person could just pop up, well, buy me out too, right? Uh, I make, I'm making a wonderful business, this crazy security company, so you pay like, a part on the market like for hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And then they all start to collapse and separate and it kind of prevents from their actually being a universal monopoly. Like with government, the monopoly and first class mail, there's $16 billion in debt, right? And, uh, and they have the whole market to themselves. <laughs> and they're still in debt, they're still going down. Uh, and that's what natural what happened to any, any free market agency that tries to do that route like uh, USPS. The USPS is threatening to cut off Saturdays. Um, the way they resolved the issue, so there's like long lines waits at USPS. The way how they resolved it, um, instead of like a free market will say, hey, let's get some more customers, let's open it up more. I, I guess we're having a lot of business. A lot of people are coming expand. here. Expand, right? Yeah. Expand, right. Uh, let's set up another one. The way they resolved it is by just taking off the clock from the USPS and nobody notices the time. <laughs> if some places will put up a sign that don't take out your cell phone while you're online because they don't want you to look at the time. That's how they resolve it, right? And so you, you don't have, you'll never have it. Like go to a FedEx, UPS, it's nice and clean, right? Good stickers uh, on, on the window shield. It doesn't look decrepit. Look at like comparison. Compare like a FedEx box, UPS box, and an old rusty uh, USPS box, right? We have a monopoly on something, but no one technically, there's no real ownership on this stuff. There's no incentive to take care of it, mm -hmm. right? If it belongs to everyone, it's like, well, I guess someone will take care of it. You're a big fan of Brazil, I imagine. Brazil? <laughs> Terry Gilliam? Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, you would enjoy yeah? it. Yeah? It's all about, it's Monty Python parroting bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> you would enjoy it. A lot. Brazil? I'll mm -hmm. have to watch that. Let me, let me write that down. Like, if you enjoy, it, um, it, I think the 80s. If you enjoy Monty Python's brand of humor yeah. and dislike big government, you will you'll yeah. find that movie great. Right, cool. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? Well, you've got a lot of the same points I usually pose. Right? Yeah, okay, I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying to pose a lot of the main. Like, all right. So, how, all right. So you said you, you, this is what you would ask to talk to your father, right? Uh, all right. All right. Uh, well, that's that's usually. So I have uh, I have a set up uh, questionnaire way to imply that you already are you already use voluntariness, you know, to solve your problems, right? I usually start off with three questions, you know, in your day to day life, you use violence to solve your personal problems. And the person sometimes will say, well, uh, um, maybe, it's like, no, it's like, well, let's define the terms. And violence will be defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault, right? All violations of personal body rights, right? Uh, and then the second question would be, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? And everyone usually agrees, yeah. Outside the areas of self-defense would be wrong, would be moral. And self-defense is self-preservation. It's uh, resistance from the force, right? Because um, a lot of people use violence to be very abstract, but that's why it's very important to define it. And then the last question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? people are, Absolutely, versus like talking, persuasion, right? Instead of grabbing, you have to do what I have to, have to say. Um, and when the person says, yeah, actually that's wrong, then great, you just told me your day to the life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions, you apply means to solve your problems. That means you have this more integrity against that violence. And then all you have to do then is show objectively what government is, that in every facet of government, it only knows how to solve problems through the threat of using violence.
right? I, he, he, it's funded through even more violence. There's no point, again, can say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You just have to give up your property. You still have to pay your, you have to pay, pay your, give up your money. You still have to pay your taxes. Right? Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice on how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten again to send you to another cage well, what's your part to pay about your taxes. So you just have to point out objectively, so the, the picture. I think for a lot, most part, a lot of it's hard to see the whole thing if you don't have to paint the brush. You know, to do the outlines as like as a regular puzzle, you know, objectively, and then we can fill up the space with a lot of the other alternative questions. Yeah, I was just gonna wait for you. I, we oh, I, 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 was I, I, around here. I knew you guys more. would have a great conversation. <laughs> I might actually bring up a couple more things. All right. Well, I'll see you at home. I'm starving. Okay. So, something such as Somalia, yeah, um, where the government is all but hanging on and corruption has really taken hold as Actually, the main gave me last time. <laughs> as the main form of governance. Yeah. Like the people who are corrupt, the people who realize who they can take advantage of have taken advantage of them in ways that they get like how would that be prevented in um in our anarchist society? Uh well, I guess you look at Somalia, and that uh, government has only been recently reintroduced. Mm -hmm. They've been absent without government for, for quite some time now, uh, after their, their wars. Yeah, that ousted the government. So it was absent without a government for a while. So then you compare Somalia to, in comparison to the surrounding African states, and how it fared. And actually things improved dramatically in all areas, and how you would rate, uh, I guess, a city or a, a country. You know, literacy rates started to improving. People's, uh, uh, the rate for exchange of uh, getting income was improving. Uh, mortality rate was starting to decline. Um, you know, things were... And granted, that was right after a war. That was, yeah, after a war, you don't have a government want violence anymore. So things started to improve. But now, recently, uh, now there is a government, now there's news reports coming out that their security forces are raping women. Uh, so now you have government all over again reintroducing violence. But I mean, there were plenty of, like, obviously piracy off the coast running rampant because there was nothing to, uh, there was no government to stop. Right. Oh, I mean, you still have that under government regardless. You still have the cops that claim uh, asset forfeiture because you have uh, these, you know, plants and you take your car and take your house. Uh, but we don't call them pirates because they wear costumes. That even happens at a more grander scale. We're, if we're concerned about piracy, we're concerned about theft, then let's look at the biggest organization first that does all that theft, right? And then we'll take care of the smaller pirates out on the coast in the waters, right? If we're so much concerned about piracy, then let's end the, the monopoly and currency, right? Let's end the biggest thief in the world first, right? Uh, go after the, the Leviathan, not the small Frankenstein monsters that it creates. You know, go after Dr. Frankenstein. That's our real main concern. Um, if we're against monopolies, then let's be against the biggest monopoly in the earth <laughs> called governments, right? Um, I mean, so because, um, and at the same time, the culture in Somalia is, is not, again, anti statism. It's, again, they just came out of the war, they didn't create a government yet, but the mindset, the cultural uh, rituals for that are still exist. So it was inevitable that they're going to try again. Um, and that's usually because that's all they know. This philosophy has not yet been introduced. There's nobody really talking about free markets. There's nobody. I don't know anyone who would know who Rothbard is, or uh, <laughs> uh, you know, for a lot of or Hoppe or anything like that. So, and that's kind of what we have to do as free market anarchists: introduce this message, you know, be those ambassadors of, of, of freedom, and, and talk to and reach out for these people. So that way, when the moment comes, they don't have to repeat and reboot the matrix again. Like, look, you didn't have a government. Let's stay like that, right? There's no 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 constitution. That's that's just a piece of paper. It doesn't protect you, right? It's not a real contract, right? Only like 37 people in secret do it for themselves, right? Like even in the Constitution. Probably another comment. Uh, so this is us very good. And then, so that's that's really it. Um, that's uh, you, you, you introduce this idea, this philosophy, and uh, you know you don't really introduce it. I have no idea. Something wrong. Probably uh, that that uh, I'm against private property, but this is personal property. It belongs to me. I'm like what? <laughs> it's even exactly the same thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's so that's uh, I guess my response is the Somalia thing. Any response to pretty much any region, like, like Detroit, without, like, where government has collapsed. I have a lot of friends in uh, the Michigan region who are like trying to do a lot of this stuff. You know, you have uh, the guy who bought four buses. You know, painted the buses reflect the geographic region of Detroit, and people are volunteering paying for these buses because mass transit is shut down, right? And so on these buses, there's music on these buses, there's Wi-Fi on these buses, there's B Y O B, ticket territory, and. Uh, 
Um, and so because there's no monopoly on law so much to enforce, you're kind of free up to create creative and fun services. They don't have to be these boring, bumpy rides that never arrives on time. You know, every hour and a half, and if you miss it, you suck. It sucks. This buses will still pick you up wherever you are. Call them, text them. And there's centralized planning routes, right? There's also the probably security in Detroit. This is the best best example of how volunteers have worked without the state. So it takes over an hour for the police to respond to 911 calls. Over an hour. Because uh, again, it, unfunded liabilities it starts to collapse. So this guy uh, started his business a few years ago called Viper Threat Management Systems. And he, he provides security and self-defense for these neighborhoods. And they volunteer and pay for that service. Um, what if someone can't afford a service like that? He does. He helps out for people who can't afford it. Just like the bus guy, he will go out to impoverished neighborhoods and soak human rights. So they have their own uh, humanitarian programs within their own How do they service. afford to do that? Do, is it uh, just charging slightly more than it's worth for the people who can pay for it? Uh, no, they, they usually have a standard rate. Something like this just came out in Oakland. And it's like I think it's like a $20 monthly subscription. But like again, just, you, maybe you can open up like uh, another, your business. Hey, would you like to help provide security for another neighbor? You know, maybe have a donation bank, right? Hey, you're a lucky person. Uh, somebody like to help provide security for you. you know, they still have lamp, the lamp address. But it, from that stuff, this comes from like writing up a good business plan. Uh, the one in Oakland did it through crowdsource funding. Uh, I think it was Kickstarter campaign. Okay. Right? So that's that's what you free up. A lot of different ways to fund ideas, right? Huh. You don't have to point a gun at them through taxes. So you have to pay for USPS or for social security. Uh, even though you name no, you have no consent. It's not voluntary. You have no freedom to say no. Wow. Right? So you're a free market anarchist. Yeah, so no, where, where do you come from? Uh, um, I'm from Rockingham County, like around Jamie area. Right, right. Uh, so you're just visiting? Uh, yeah, my brother uh, goes to VCU here. I actually go to William & Mary. Really? Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. So how did you know this is free market anarchism? I guess you were... Well, career. my brother told me about it, and you had a nice anarchist <laughs> on your arm. Yeah. So I knew some type of anarchism. I'm, I'm just appropriating all colors. <laughs> so I was like, sorry, you guys had your red and the black uses for, for like decades and hasn't gone anywhere. So, uh, real anarchists are against the initiation, of course, right? They like to say, well, you know, ca well capitalism too. It's like, it's, they, don't, they don't understand the separation of free market versus a state controlled market. They see the two the same. Uh, they don't realize without government, there's no corporations. There's no one to bribe or lobby. Uh, so how do you instate an anarchist, uh, I don't want to say state because anarchism is like a free and voluntary state. community. Yeah, how would you um, instate that without force? You just, you, yeah. you just like wait for the government to fail and then... But that's inevitable. Uh, it's got lost over 90% of its uh, currency, the value of it's the dollar, right? It's got, you got 3% to go. It's going to try to prolong it as long as it can, um, but that's inevitable. What happens after that, maybe the matrix reboots, um, or the new government will form out of that, then it's hard to stop it in its infancy. Yeah, but how do you... How, how do you stop that? How do you... Yeah, how do you stop it from rebooting? One conversation at a time. Um, I, I do this pretty much every day, as, as often as I can. Um, I have... Oh, I have, uh, yesterday was uh, like my 50th video on, I call it Spreading Anarchy. Okay. And uh, a lot of great conversations, a lot of people understanding. Uh, I'm part of Liberate RVA, a non-political organization. So like last year it was just me by myself and now it just started to grow. Um, my girlfriend's anarchist, my best friends, my mom, my sister, uh, just grows out naturally. Like, uh, just being consistent, right? Like this philosophy is consistent and rational and just consistently just uh, encouraging the dialogue and discussion and it grows naturally from that. And you don't have to convince all of Richmond. A good 10% is enough to push for a paradigm shift, right? That's just a few thousand, that's all you need. Everyone agree pushing that, these culture bounce forward. Because you're not just ending states and you're replacing it, right? You're replacing the language of violence with the language of voluntarism, which is something we're already familiar with in our day to the lives to begin with. Right? It's not that foreign or strange. Like, and then you can start seeing the matrix objectively. The cops are nothing but guys in costumes, right? Uh, you see them, you see government for what it is, a monopoly on the services I want. Uh, whereas you don't have the freedom again to unsubscribe from others. You have the freedom to subscribe, unsubscribe from other services, but you see that's, that's I don't like the difference with what you have with government. And just start off with that. Just uh, one conversation, talk to you. Real, real, really using a real voice. Because uh -huh. uh, again, that's our, so you look at yourself as government, how does government control society? Um, they know people want to create change, make a difference, so you do it by telling them to vote, right? Voting is a form of uh, apathetic uh, attempt to create change. Because all it is objectively is waiting every four years and then waiting, you know, spending a few hours looking for parking, waiting in line, and then stepping into a confession booth, you know, punching a number, pulling a chat, and you step out, right? And people say, oh, who'd you vote for? And people say, oh, how dare you? That's a personal issue. And then people don't talk about it again for another four more years. 
right? So they're afraid for us of using a real voice. We actually use a real voice and reach out and we understand we share these common values against violence. But how do you, uh, I guess one of the biggest issues is just how do you cure that apathy? Uh, by by showing how this can work, uh, by showing how it, uh, how well, I guess we have the most rational philosophy to, to show how it's like objectively. Yeah. But if people are content with how it is, if people are, I, I don't think you can find anyone that's content. You can find someone that generally has some problem with the government now. It's, I mean, uh, they have some so, like obviously everyone has a little bit of a problem, but content enough that they don't feel to put in the effort to make something like this work. Most people aren't willing to put in the effort sure. to make something like this work. How would you? Well, then, then, uh, then, well, then that's fine. It's like, well, for me, it's like if someone says, well, it's, it's never going to work. It's like, all right, well, hopefully one day you let go of the idea that binds us to this free. I'm going to go talk to someone else. Take good care. Yeah. Right? Let's uh, ignore the, the people who are extremely apathetic. You know, don't, it's like, well, uh, it's not really my philosophy. The philosophy is subjective. You can look it up yourself, cross check me, I have a pamphlet. You know, any questions? Let's continue the discussion. I'm going to continue talking to someone else. Right, um, and for the most part, that's like against like with the communists. Well, take good care. Have no time. Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to someone well, else. See, that's more the, my, my problem is that I feel like most people are so sheep like that they need someone to, li especially since we've been in the system of government yeah, so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are so sheep like that they need it's something to hegemony. latch yeah. onto. They need the patriarch, the matriarch, whatever to latch onto, or else they don't know what to do with themselves. Right, right, right. If you give them freedom, they're like, well. What now? I'm used to having this provided for me. I'm used to having this decided for right. me. I don't know how to make these decisions on my own right. without someone else giving it to me. I like. I don't care if it's forced upon me. At least someone else is doing it. Well, I I think maybe there might be some underestimation and capabilities of people. All right. So you have one aspect that people do follow. I mean, the Milton Friedman experience and stuff like that. Uh, they do follow that kind of authority. Uh, for the most part, though, they follow the authority that this is the most efficient way of doing things. Right? So you could show them even an argument that no, the government is inefficient. They're efficient at stealing from you, sure, but all the errors and what they provide is inefficient, right? Uh, so or, or compete against those uh, monopolized services and provide, show them something that's efficient. For the most part, like I don't know the efficiency between um, like certain gadgets and stuff like that. I'll read the ratings, do consumer reports. I'll pick the most. I don't know how it works, but I'll use it because it works, right? So I'm a philosopher that works. Like, well, this makes sense. This is this this seems like it works. It doesn't sound that hard. I don't have to go into like uh, Austrian economics. I don't have to go into like difficult concepts to show them objectively something simple and uh, people can get it. People can understand. They don't have to know like the intricacies of like the, of, like, uh, the arguments for like against intellectual property or how to defend private property. They don't even know that. Just simple ways to kind of communicate this stuff. Um, but I, I guess for for me again, you don't need to convince all of Richmond again. Uh, you know, like you look at Detroit last year, 47% of all homeowners is not paying the property taxes, right? All 47%. There were like 60 blocks of, uh, of, of homes that only one person paid their property taxes, <laughs> right? Because a lot of them started seeing that the government weren't providing these services. So it's like, well, why am I paying? Great, stay right there. Stay right there. Keep keep that mentality. Don't think the government could ever provide you the services. So like, don't st don't renew the government. Uh, but if they can all do it alone, you know, to unite it, then yeah, it can kind of work to a point where maybe this could work in any city, right? United together, we can all stop paying our property taxes, yeah. right? One by one, if we stop, yeah, they'll take you off. But when all of us stop together, just like in Detroit, the whole thing starts to collapse even yeah. further. Well, I mean, I agree. And that's like, that's something that I feel like happens in so many other uh, facets of society apart from government is that people need the majority to be doing something to understand that as the right thing to do. Yeah. If it's a minority, it's automatically written off as like a subculture that I shouldn't be associated with. And the problem is that the majority of people are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I, like, how would it ever, like, even if it is the best way to live yeah. in this free and consenting society, is it actually realistic that we would ever reach that point? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, I want, I want I guess I'm, I'm a think, pessimistic. I, yeah, I, I want freedom in my lifetime. I don't want to die this I don't want to hold up a signed baggage man to be free. I don't want my children to have social security prison tattoo numbers on their feet, right? And the only way best know I know how, me personally, and how to achieve it. We all have different ways we can go towards fighting the matrix. Uh, and I feel my, my every way is just talking to people about this stuff. And, and if I continue to talk, there's one person that's unplugged. They can see the matrix of what it is, encourage them to reach out in their own interpersonal relationships, right? 
uh, we have monthly freedom gatherings to continue the discussion. Um, every, every person is very important to, to understanding the scope and capacity and how uh, society is run and dominated by, by this culture state. Um, you just have to, one battle of one person at a time, one mind at a time. Um, I don't know, to, to resign yourself. I and mean, everyone kind of resigns in the past. I mean, every, every form of action or plan that people put forth in the past have failed. The fact that you're still a tax slave born here today and you're still a slave means that they failed. Well, see, that, well, that's exactly the thing. Right. This idea has been around since the beginning of government. Ever since there was a gov an oppressive yeah. government, people were like, we should get rid of this. Right. But it's never worked. Right. Why, so, would, why would now be any different? Only because every attempt to do it in the past is always trying to do it politically. Maybe. And that's, and that's where they fell. They thought they could infiltrate an organization that's founded on violence and overturn it against itself. They always appeal to the political rulers, try to sway the political rulers' minds, instead of turning to their community and, and, and unite them instead. They've been distracted by like, the 1984 pamphlet on how to see, be See, usually what happens when you turn to the community is what happens, you've got a community that all believes in this idea, and then they realize few people outside of that community believe in it, they create a commune, and that's usually what happens when you have like anarchist communes springing up yeah, in yeah, France yeah. and Canada, and it's never spread beyond those communes because there's so many people that disregard it as just a fantasy, a right. utopian society that'll never work. Right. Well, even people who, descri who describe it as such, they can tell it's utopian to think governments can work. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's utopian thinking. After thousands of years and trying to violently control people's lives, you think yeah. that could work. Uh, that's utopian thinking, right? It's like, look, I'm, I'm a realistic. Look, either something's voluntary or not. Something's consensual or non-consensual, right? Either I have the freedom to to, to compete or I don't, right? Uh, and the fact of the matter is, you're, none of us is free. And that's and that's the main point that a lot of people have attempted in the past to escape to the clusters of statism. Uh, you have your like Kunlu city in uh, in Hong Kong. You have Christianity in Europe. You have. Um, uh, you see this Conway in North Carolina, you have a lot of people in California trying to live sustainably off the grid. The fact of the matter is, no matter how far away you run and try to live sustainably, as long as the state exists, you'll never have the freedom to be left alone if you wanted to. And that's what you have to continue to fight, is, is the, the culture, is the matrix. Uh, we can escape ourselves our own, we'll be fine, sure, but we'll never still have the freedom to be left alone. Some way, somehow they'll find you, even if you have your own building, they'll say, well, that's not up to code. You have a license for that. It's like, sorry, that's not up to specs. Tear the whole thing down, move to the city, and be a pay, pay, you know, another tax slave. Right? And that's what they've been doing to a lot of people. So, they, 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 even um, a lot of these communes. So, that's, and that's the thing. Great, you can create your own commune, but the fight's still out there. It hasn't ended. Right? If you don't go out there and, 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 and uh, try to end the matrix itself altogether, yeah, now that's, that's what the direction should be at. Um, you find a lot of people being distracted trying to fight corporations, but I'd rather go after Dr. Frankenstein, <laughs> right? Not the, the, the Dr. Fr the Frankenstein monsters it creates. Let's go to the source, and the source has always been political power. The source has always been government. Um, in the past, even the libertarians, the libertarian party has always tried to infiltrate their organization. Look, you've had 40 years to do something. Nothing to show for it. Here, maybe in Virginia, it's like, maybe we can get Starbucks for 7% or 10%, but you only got 7%. What, wait another four, eight more years? So you're 40, 50, right? Um, I think that's kind of what's been lacking with a lot of this stuff. All the information said, the philosophy's been around, but I think for the most part, a lot of been, people just been social, jerking around with each other with this philosophy. Yeah, so they they have this effort. negative contempt towards the community outside of it. Although well, they can't get it. They become like Doug Casey, uh, you know, old curmudgeon misanthropes, you know, uh, because they get it and no one else will can and so they, you know, just perish them. Um, but I don't believe that's true at all. Um, I know, uh, I, again, okay. communication is difficult, but I guess uh, and how you're responding okay. to people and see that feedback and just trying to, trying to talk, trying to communicate, I think that's really what's the only thing that's missing from this, from actually ever happening. Yeah. I guess, yeah. One thing that's sort of popped yeah, yeah, yeah. back to an earlier point, what would happen um, within this ideal society in a situation in which you have two people without insurance yeah. who have a dispute over, I guess, easiest thing would be uh, theft yeah. and wouldn't just might make right? Wouldn't the one who's strong be the one who has more friends, right. the one who, ha who can easily overpower the other one? be the decided, I guess, victor. So you have three Correct. homeless guys beating up one homeless guy? Yeah. Um, 
Or they don't even have to be homeless. They can have a home. They just don't have any insurance. Somehow these uh, people who don't live in a... Well, most of these communities are going to offer insurance to begin with. Uh -huh. They want to guarantee that the property is going to be safe if you live there, yeah. right? Um, people don't want to, that's, that's fine. You, there's a lot of land available for you to accept your own home. You don't have to have this, uh -huh. right? Um, you know, again, you'll still have uh, non-profit organizations. You'll still have people say, hey, like again, like Carnegie, you know, biggest philanthropist in the world giving out money. Pretty even gave libraries to the public too, right? Uh, so people say, hey, you don't have insurance, let me provide insurance. You don't have a job, hey, uh, there's no market controls anymore from the state. I, let me give you a job. What if one of these communities over time decides that or comes up with a different idea of how things should be run, sure. believes that they have an idea of how things that should be run, and they have the money and power to enforce that on a neighboring community. All right, okay, so... Like, so yeah, then yeah. you would... It's sort of like warring tribes. It's very right, right. tribal. Who... Why, what, 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 how could what, they be stopped? All right, for most part, a lot of the warring tribes, uh, a lot of the stuff that happens is because... Uh, I, I, I found it to be um, conflicting preferences, right? Maybe cultural preferences that differ. Um, but the main problem a lot of people see that a lot of this stuff causes because a lot of people use political powers the, 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 um, the temptation to use political powers to force a preference onto them. So it becomes that kind of political warfare with those cultures. Um, because for most part, a lot of people, like even someone who's like homophobic, doesn't really want to see them in their own house. But also, they're fine, right? As long as they don't see them in their own private property, yeah. they're fine. So I, I don't really don't foresee a lot of this stuff. People going like, I'm going to get angry at the, at the community that smokes weed. I think for the most part, if you hate weed, great. You'll never have to see in your life to live in your own community. I don't think it creates that animal the tendency to want to go after the pot smokers in the community next door over because even then before like say war breaks out like Sunnis and Shia, Shiites yeah, like yeah, yeah. that all that all stems from the choosing of a leader hundreds of years ago but yet you have these groups of people that hate each other say you have two belligerent religions that are that have been warring against each other for years who find themselves in communities yeah. within this society near each other. What keeps them from warring? What keeps that from spreading to other societies? What, what keeps someone from saying, I want yeah, what this yeah, guy yeah. has. I have an entire community behind me. We can take it. We can be rich. We can enslave okay. these people. Right, right. What stops then, then you have one community facing thousands of other communities. All right, I'm, 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 I'm the 420 community. I'm right next door to the Salvia community. Hey, in the case we're, we're invaded by this community that hates drugs, uh, this really tiny community, in case whatever, I don't know my happen yeah. right uh we want to make a defensive pact yeah sure all right man they talk you create this defensive pact against anyone who initiates force right? we can all agree on the nap right so, so the whole then great you just screwed yourself over because now you don't face this one community you face thousands yeah right you don't, it's, it's you don't not face this one country all. right like so to speak like you face thousands and you find this kind of natural happens in history you know probably tries to rise all the countries unite against them um spain tried to do that in uh latin america all the countries uh, try to unite against them but isn't that forcing your ideas upon someone else? Uh, that and that's why it violates the NAP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I don't want to beat your camera oh. messed up. It's starting to rain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 we can wrap this up. Well, well all right, all right. it's not. It's, you're practicing self-defense from someone initiating that force onto your okay. property or body. Yeah. So you're not you're not going out to kill them. You're allowed to resist that violence, okay. right? Uh, like, so much you're allowed to resist rape or being assaulted, right? But you're you not initiating, initiate. right? Uh, it's the people that are initiating. But then, like, it, it's again, it's not uh, economically feasible to, like, I'm going to create a company to fight, like, all of the, you know, sorry, I can't do it. Uh, I have too much to risk. It's not a good business proposition for me, and uh, I might die. I'd, I'd rather live. You know, I'm making, have a, have a good living here, being legit, right? Yeah. I don't want to screw up my rating system. So go, go to some, yeah, go to somebody else, right? It's more cost beneficial to be voluntary, right? Um, then a lot of this aspect. All right, so even the violence aspect of it, a lot of this stuff comes to childhood, right? So you can't be against state violence. You have to, be, you have to universalize it to include children. Right, it's wrong and immoral to also initiate that violence onto children, including spanking. A lot of spanking, this has to be a traumatic event to that child, physical, sexual, verbal, to uh, to kind of hurt them in their brain as their brain is to continue to develop. And a lot of those traumatic in in events that add up eventually lead to acting violent in their later adulthood life. Uh, criminality, suicide, um, all this is information is out there because um, it, it even knocks out a key point. So sometimes it's even harder to rationalize when you've been beaten so much uh, as a kid growing See, up. See, I don't, I don't really classify spanking as beating. Like, I was spanked as a kid, um, I f but I don't hold anything against my, like, I don't see anything wrong with that happening to me right. as a person. Well, why did you get hit? What? 
because I was beating the crap out of my little brother, or because I was... Where, where, where did you learn that from? Maybe from getting spanked, right? Well, or television, or right, the world around me, sure. or say I the culture around you is very lied to my parents same. on a constant basis, constantly lying to my parents, and nothing else was getting through to me to like tell me like that's wrong. None of them trying to understand why you're lying, why, why, uh, or maybe trying to talk to you or trying to reason with you. You're, you're well, yeah, no. Well, I mean, when you understand you're, why you're lying. Well, an eight-year-old doesn't. What do you mean an eight-year-old? Yes, they can. People can. Children can negotiate. <laughs> but eight-year-olds, they find the children who have not been dis uh, spanked uh, at all. Or they're like the most disciplined, well, well mannered. Well, I think it really depends on which children that haven't been spanked. I've known quite a few kids who weren't spanked who were just terribly spoiled. Well, a lot of children are, are definitely spanked from like, uh, like the first few years alone, like 97% of all American families is with their kids. Um, a lot of people are kind of victims of that. And that, that, that is stuff that language of violence is taught then. And that's where we pick up a lot of these behaviors. Um, but all right, all right, but even, even still, you can take them to a different, a different area. So it's okay to hit grandpa because he doesn't understand, right? Uh, he's like, well, Grandpa, I'm sorry, but I told you twice, what? <laughs> Alright, uh, so that's, that's why it's very important to universalize it, because a lot of violence tendency comes from that environment. Like, someone can may have like a sociopathic gene, uh, but if they have a good environment, a peaceful parent, parenting environment, that gene may, may remain dormant. Uh, it won't turn on. Uh, it's just a lot, of, a lot of stuff can, be, can remain at, at, at that level. Well, I, I feel like violence. it's... It's sort of unfair to put that on the parents. I, I'm, I'm like I'm so, actually so? a sociopath. Right. Um. Actually, my brother and I both are. Right. But that a lot of that comes from I guess was it came out of dormancy not because I was spanked by my parents but because my a friend of mine was shot. Like it's. Oh not, yeah, it has to be a traumatic experience. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't feel like getting spanked with a spoon three times is going to be that traumatic experience. It just like, has to be the frequency. So maybe you had one. So there's uh, this ACE test, test called like the Adult Childhood Experiences mm -hmm. and where it's so, like you measure all the different types of abuse that you've had growing up and where your parents divorced, did you ever see your mother get hit. Uh, a lot, it could be a, a lot of different kinds. And so what they found through uh, this study of like, uh, like quite, a, quite a number of people, even in the, um, who grew up in the uh, middle class, that uh, even a lot of them still got hurt. A lot of them did experience a lot of different kinds of violence. And adding up those different types of traumatic experience led to them be a tendency to criminality, to violence, to addictions, to uh, to suicide, to, to a lot of mental health issues in later on in their adult life. Uh, so they find a, a positive correlation with that. Say maybe one or two, sure, but I'm saying like the tendency and stuff like yeah. that to turn it on. Well, I, I don't know much about the psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's why it all connects because then you, you find again the cause of violence, right? You find against the cause of society being crumbling to the state where it is, and that's government. If you trace it even back further, where white people are violent to begin with, and that points out to, to sometimes the lack of parenting or, or violent parenting. Uh, so that's so that, that's the cure to a lot of this violence. So there won't be a need if we help you to uh, teach parent, parents to be, you know, to look at their children as human beings, they're not animals. Even like people who price when like ruining dogs and stuff like that don't think they're dogs, right? Uh, and a lot of the times you even ask parents, what would your childhood like? And they'll say, well, it was violent too, and they're just repeating that handbook that was just yeah. given to them, right? Yeah. So that's that's where the violence breaks. Yeah, violence, when it breaks there, then there won't actually be that much need for security. Well, I feel like when I was, like, yeah. as a child, when I was punished, there was always reinforced that, like, this is, like, it's out of love. It's not... It's not out of anger. Like my my parents, they told, like this, even today they would say like I hated spanking you. Like I, my my parents would, didn't want to, but they knew that it would help instill like this is wrong and this is right, right. into me. Because even from very basic societies, what's wrong and what's right is many times determined by you get fucked over when this happens, so that's wrong. Right. You don't when this happens, so that's right. And so. And since there's really no one else to enforce that but your parents, many times just having you go up to your room isn't going to enforce that in a way that it's going to stick. Yeah, it's avoiding the problem. And it's yeah. like actually talking to you. Trying yeah. to understand why, where they come from, where you're yeah. going at. It's like, uh, like, you know, son. Well, see, I, I mean, like, I, I lied that. because I was a sociopath because I realized lying got me what I wanted. Sure. Yeah. And uh, that was reinforced because I would lie and I would get what I wanted. And if I kept lying and getting what I wanted, and didn't lie and then 
get spanked, right. I would just continue lying. So no one talked to you when you saw that uh, traumatic incident about you said some, someone close to you died? Well, yeah. Uh, no, but there's no, hey, look, I'm trying to explain why that happened. Well, like, I knew why it happened. It was I mean, you need to have documentary in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, but even still, for a talk to, to witness that sort of stuff, you know, to, to talk to that oh, child. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't really in childhood. That was more, like, later on. Right. Uh, but you so said you were still spanked as a, as a kid? Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I wouldn't really yeah, label that right as... There, I'm just saying a lot of the science is out there. There's a guy who's uh, the scientist who's looking at his own background in history, like his father's father's father's. A lot of them have murdered a lot of people. And his brain also matches that of a sociopath. And he's trying to say, well, why doesn't he have like the, like, uh, the, the tendencies or the traits of it, right? Even though his brain matches his, that of a sociopath. Like the brain activity whole highlights the same area as it would. And then uh, he traces back into their own family history. It's like a lot of them grew up very violently. Um, and then looking back at his own history, he, he didn't have any of that. His parents never actually hit him. Um, and so he suspects that that's actually because the, the gene, so he has all the genes for it, but that one particular gene remained dormant because that, like, that factor, that one, um, I guess, uh, chemical agent was, was lacking. And that was just for him to have a traumatic experience for, for that to, to turn on. Um, so there's just a lot of correlation out there uh, towards that. And that's why we, we actually also advocate peaceful parenting. Um, to prevent a lot of these problems from arising, right? Teaching children negotiation skills, uh, trying to understand your child. Now, don't hit your child because he doesn't understand. You know I mean, yeah, if you're trying to understand the children to, to touch the stove, maybe get them a uh, kiss of sex, right? Introduce your child, show the child. Not like, well, the child is running across the street. Well, what are you doing not introducing your child to the street to begin with? Of course he's going to run. He has no idea what's going on, right? Like, yeah. give, him, give him a little car, show him. Yeah, well, right, see, play. I feel like with that example, a lot of kids don't understand the idea of getting like really hurt like they don't re they don't understand the idea of I could die if I do this right. and you tell them like I care about you I I don't want you getting hurt running out here yeah. but to them it's fun to run yeah, to the yeah, street yeah. and with and but you just gotta, you can, they can't you like it it's your, your, your parents you chose to have the child the child didn't choose to have you well yeah right but you can't you need to teach them like why they shouldn't run out into the street and that you then it's you, hard to explain yeah, to them true, something true, from true. experiences they haven't had. That's true. Well that's why you may talk to the parents, uh, talk to other people, like how do you explain this? Or talk to a child or a person who knows how to child rear, you know, I find hey what well, read through books, do your homework. I mean this you know eventually this day was gonna come. Did you not prepare for this as you were like any other big final moment in your life? This is a human being you're raising. I mean, you know, do your homework. You, there's a lot of books out there that showing how to teach a child and prevent this sort of stuff, right? And that's very important to do. Don't yeah. wait till the last minute to study, right? Oh fuck, what did I do? Okay, I guess I hit, right? Um, or say like, you know, uh, I know remember that time when you trip and you had a boo-boo on your knee and scraped and really hurt? And it's like it's like it's like, well, that might happen all over your body. I and mean, it might happen to me in my, like, inside, you know, my heart. You know, to find different ways to communicate yeah. to yourself, but then to understand, right? And that's the most important part is, it's, uh, yeah, it's an achievement to, to raise a child, you know, all the way to adulthood. That's, that's a lot, of course, if you're, if you're going to be a parent. But again, the child didn't choose to have you. You chose to have guardianship to raise a child, right? The most healthy, imaginable way that you can for that, for that kid. Um, you know, you don't just have a kid and that's it, right? You prepare, you get ready, you do your homework, uh, and then, when you're ready, yeah. Create a wonderful, beautiful human being. Right? Teach him rational skills so he himself can find can do the logic, right? And when, when spanking and a lot of the stuff can't be turned out key points, that's the last thing you want to do then, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, and that will help that child to negotiate life, never use violence because you never taught him the language of violence. Um, you know, it's we'll find different ways, multiple ways to solve these problems. Things that we couldn't even imagine. Right? And that's, uh, and that's very important. That's eventually how you prevent a lot of these warring cultures because you, you cut it off at the root. <laughs> right? You don't raise generations of valiant human beings at that point. Peaceful generations. Yeah. And then a lot of the problems will be kind of easy to solve. You won't probably need that many months of security. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, that's what we advocate here. So it's not just, you, you have to be against all of it, initiation, of course. And, that, and universalizing it is what prevents it from becoming a small government. Because we're saying, well, the violence is that, like, that the violence is that it does to us is uh, not okay. But the violence we do to each other is okay, right? Those exceptions will create a government to begin with, right? You're not allowed to steal, we'll call it taxes. Right, you're not allowed to murder, but we're going to go ahead and call it an organized war. We wear a costume, right? If, are you wearing a costume? Then you're not allowed to murder. You're not allowed to kidnap. You're not allowed to dehumanize. Uh, a lot of these exceptions in the language, and and not excluding the NAP to, to children, um, creates that exception that anyone can exploit. Right. So it's better just even to be safe and rationalize it, including each other. I mean, what harm can it do if not to spank a child? Right. Um, and that's that's something that we can do. Like different ways we can do positive changes.
create helping raise positive <gasps> generations. Yeah. You know? Well, dude, I'd love to talk more about yeah, yeah. it. My, <laughs> my name is article. Cal. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron, pleasure nice to meet you. you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just Can I get your uh, email too? Absolutely, dude. I was the, the, yeah, yeah. No, no, but we do monthly gatherings anyway, so you're more than well. I'll send you an email. Uh, if you're ever in the area again, um, let me know. It's really cool to meet another free market anarchist. That's yeah, awesome, man. <laughs> that is awesome. That's great. Yeah. Well, later on, nice All right, man, take good care. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs>